The legacy Jesus left for us is not the car he drove, neither the clothes he wore, neither the sandals he wore. He left words. He left the message. I do not know where Apostle Paul lived and I do not know what kind of car he drove if there were cars in his time. I do not know what kind of perfumes he used, but I know one thing. He left the epistles for me. He left the epistles. 50 years after now, if Jesus tarries, 100 years after now, if Jesus tarries, and some of us are no more here 100 years after now, you will not be remembered for the location of your church and the size of the building. Is the things you said that you'll be remembered for if they have the potency to survive till then. If they have the potency to survive till then. E.W. Kenya was not popular in his day. He was not popular. He was hated. He was attacked and persecuted. But till today, his books are circulating all over the world as reference materials. Reference materials. They are all over the world. And people are still buying the books globally. Why? He had the message. They accused him of metaphysics. They attacked him. He wasn't popular. Popularity is not the mark of divine approval. You may not be popular today. But if you have the message, it's a matter of time. A generation will arise with revelation. And your message will become their reference materials. Who am I talking to in this place? The man Kenneth E. Hagin was not popular in the 60s. Nobody wanted to hear him because there were healing evangelists all over. Healing evangelists, Alexander Dowe, Jock Cole, A.A. A. Allen, they were doing miracles. And the man Hagin was just teaching, 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 teaching. He looked unpopular. He looked unserious. He looked like he was not doing ministry. The healing evangelists were all over. He never fell for the temptation of compromise. He stayed with the world. Years after, they all died and left the scene. The man remained. Until tomorrow, Ken Hagin's ministry is changing the entire world. The message is what you'll be remembered for. Your doctrine is your legacy. Your doctrine is your legacy. If there's no teaching of Jesus coming out of your mouth, you have no legacy. In fact, if you're not careful in your own lifetime, your members will leave you, join another ministry, and preach the message of that ministry to you. The greatest slap a pastor can have, the greatest slap a pastor can have is for his members to go out of his ministry and understand Christ and come back to him and say, Pastor, we love you. We love you, Pastor. The things we have learned, we want to introduce you to. That's the greatest slap a pastor can ever have. And there are pastors beginning to receive it. There are pastors that are beginning to receive that slap. Members are buying our books and they say, Pastor, we think you need to read it. What they are telling him is, we have seen Christ. You don't have Christ. What they are telling is we have seen Christ. Observing you, you, you don't have Christ. We want to give you, who should give who Christ? Am I communicating? Yeah. Look at it all over the place. There's nowhere you go, you won't find Kenneth Hagin's books. They're all over and they are still in mass production. We were talking with Pastor Chris the other day. He said to me, their missionary base is very strong and effective all over the world. Till tomorrow, missionaries are still going all over the world from that ministry. And then he told me something I never knew before. Kenneth Hagin started Rema Bible School when he was 51 years old. I mean, 57 years. That's when he started Bible school. You, you never reach 40. You have started three Bible schools. The curriculum, you yourself have not understood it. The man started Bible school, Rema Bible College, at 40, 57 years of age. That's highly instructive. Highly instructive. Where are you rushing to? Where are you rushing to? Where are you in a hurry to go? The man has lived for 57 years. 
before he is starting something fresh. After 40 years in ministry. After 40 years of ministry. He now starts Bible school. No wonder the teen is. He's just going. Teen is generational. Junior. Who is now senior. To another junior. To another junior. Four generations. In his lifetime he was alive. He saw his fourth generation. Preaching. Fourth generation. Preaching the word of faith. In his lifetime. He saw first generation. Saw second generation. Saw third generation. Saw fourth generation. Preaching the word of faith. What are you talking about? What else is success? What else is success? Durability. Sustenance. The ability to be on this race 10 years, 20 years. 30, 40, 50, 60, still saying the same thing. And um, last week, uh, Pastor Chris gave me this other information that can a, can a junior now who is senior is how many years in ministry? 60 years in ministry. Pastor Hagin is 60 years in ministry. 60. So I was telling him, time flies. So. <laughs> time flies. He's not 60 years old. He's 60 years in ministry. So why are you rushing to? Take your time. Go to Arabia. Detoxify. Clean up yourself. If by the time you call, all your members have gone. Praise the Lord. Start afresh. Age is on your side. I didn't hear a good amen. What is on your side? Age is on your side. Aquila and Priscilla were ready to they, 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 by the time they finished with Apollos Apollos was ready to start afresh ready to start afresh by the time they revealed more to him look at what the Bible says in Acts 18 28 for he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ not just mighty in scripture now but was able to mightily convince the Jews publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ can somebody shout hallelujah important lesson here is the fact that Apollos received the teaching of Aquila and Priscilla number one he was humble enough to allow Aquila and Priscilla to teach him that's number one he received the teaching. He was not proud. Though he was not in the synagogue, he submitted to be taught. And I'm telling you, this kind of teaching is not rushed. Definitely must have taken some time. A preacher who realizes his message has been faulty and is honest about changing should get an Aquila and Priscilla instantly. Someone you submit to to be taught. Not that you are following, you know, you are following the teachings Nicodemusly. You copy quietly. You paste. Then when they ask you a question, you cannot understand. Answer it. You tell them, I will come back tomorrow. Then you come and be looking and looking and looking. You are hiding. You are doing Nicodemus stuff. You are still not honest. You must be honest. Your members must know that you are in the process of learning. They must know. They are, they, our pastor is growing. In the last few months, he has changed a number of things. And he's not ashamed of it. You must be honest. First thing I did in this church was to apologize. Openly, I stood here and apologized to everybody. I told them I've preached rubbish in this place. Please forgive me preach nonsense there are a number of things i have preached here that is not true things i have told you that are not scripturally right but i didn't know better what i knew is what i taught you but i'm going to make amends and i'm going to make changes and i'm not forcing you if you feel that as i'm making changes you cannot continue you're free to leave but i'm going to make changes so let's go through it and we began a number of people left 
I'm, I made up my mind before I started to lose everybody. Last Sunday, I told him, I'm surprised some of you are still here. <laughs> everybody started laughing. I said, because I thought everybody would have gone. And they say, no, 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 we're here for the word of life. Praise God. I say, praise the Lord. No rushing the process. You must humble yourself and wait. Preaching and teaching engagements, keep it at one level first. Reduce it drastically. Why? Because you will need patience. You will need honesty. And there is no substitute for being taught. To be grounded, rooted in the revelation of God's word. So you become a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing your amen.